Welcome back, folks, to the WP Tonic This Week in WordPress. This is episode 895. Yes, 895. I can't believe it. We've really got a real special guest. I've been looking forward to this interview for the last couple of weeks. We have the notorious Kevin Kevy in the house on Digital Gravity, Gravy, I should say, um, influencer, a straight talker. You know, it's going to be a fantastic discussion. I think Kevin's up for it. So, Kevin, oh, by the way, unfortunately, I haven't got my better half with me, Kurt. He's on a family journey um, for the next couple of days, helping a relative. But he will be back next week. So, Kevin, would you like to quickly give the tribe a quick introduction, like 20, 30 second introduction about yourself? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I am an agency owner. I am a product developer. I'm an educator in the WordPress space. And um, those are those are basically the, the three legs of my stool, so to speak. Um, those are that's what I'm known for. Um, so automatic CSS is one of my products uh, frames is an add on product to automatic CSS. Uh, I educate mostly in the realm of like page builders like bricks and oxygen. Uh, I focus a lot about uh, on, on scalability, maintainability in web design and projects. Uh, and that's that's pretty much the uh, quick rundown. Yeah, you're doing a fantastic job, like I would like to say, Kevin. Um, I've been watching some of your content recently, and I think you're doing a fab job, Kevin. I appreciate it. All right. Um, I don't normally say that to most people. So, <laughs> uh, before we go into the meat potatoes of this great interview, I've got a couple me messages from our major sponsors. We will be back in a few seconds, folks. Tired of hosting providers that can't handle high traffic loads? Convesio is here to help. Our platform can handle any amount of traffic all without slowing down or crashing. With immediate Slack support, performance optimization, and a team that thrives on resolving technical challenges, your e-commerce business is in safe hands. Learn more about Convesio at Convesio.com. Coming back, folks. Also, want to mention we got a sponsor for January. That's um, Cloudways. You probably all know Cloudways. It's a fantastic um, WordPress hosting provider, um, really aimed at the WordPress professional. They're doing a special offer. You can find their special offer and details of it and the other sponsors by going over to wp-tonic.com slash deals wp-tonic.com slash deals not only will you find their great offers but you'll find a curated list of the best wordpress plugins and services that will help you build those fantastic websites for your beloved clients what more could you ask for Probably a lot more, but that's all you're going to get from me, folks. I'm sorry to disappoint. I've made it a life's journey of disappointment. So let's go straight into it, Kevin. Um, maybe you can give us a quick background journey about how you got into web design and then how did you decide that you were going to go into the training and the mentorship space because it you know if you're a busy web designer it's a bit of a commitment um so first of all how did you get into web design so i've been building websites since i was around 12 and um you know like i just i was always fascinated with computers i was always fascinated with the internet and, and being able to build things on the internet and so uh, started very young. Uh, I remember in, in uh, around that age, like middle school-ish, uh, had a friend that was big into web design and uh, that, you know, he kind of got me into it and just started to explore there, build things. Uh, and then I've, I've always been an entrepreneur, like lifelong, just I don't really want a job. Like I want to, I want to build things. I want to create things uh, and I want to solve, you know, challenges. And so I've always had businesses and you know, the web design side of things has always been 
uh, kind of like it was always entrepreneurship first. And then my web design and development skills came along with that because like every business I would start, I would be the person building the website for it and working to market it and leveraging the online space for doing a lot of that marketing, whether it was an offline business or an online business. Uh, you know, after a while, I started to get more into the concept of first it was blogging, you know, following in the footsteps of like Darren Rouse, a pro, a pro blogger, right? Um, and so the concept of like, hmm, can I can I write and make that was the whole thing, like back in 2005 ish, 2006. Uh, so I started there and then I started to branch out to now, you know, it's not like monetizing a blog, let's just come up with online business concepts uh, and execute on those. And of course, I also had a martial arts studio at the time. So an offline business that I was running, uh, I was a martial arts instructor for a very, very long time. And it, it was just like my skills in all of these areas of like web design and copywriting and SEO because the online businesses, I was, it was, it was, uh, you know, heavy, heavy, heavy into SEO. So I was learning a lot of SEO principles at that time, content marketing principles. Then I started to dabble into Facebook ads and, um, Google ads, things like that. So that got me into the advertising space. It was all of these skills being developed over years and years and years and years of trying to build and market my own businesses. Uh, and then I got into kind of the agency space where I was like, you know what, I can, I, I can provide a lot of value to other businesses. And I focus mainly on local businesses in my area. Uh, and so I did the agency thing uh, and I still have my agency, but I've scaled it back a lot because of the way that automatic CSS and frames and I have an inner circle, uh, you know, a 1500 plus, um, developers, designers, freelancers, who, uh, we do a bunch of trainings for a bunch of coaching with. So I'm very, very busy on that front. Right. So, uh, and I enjoy going back to like, you know, having a martial arts school. Like I just am kind of, my personality is like a natural teacher. And so when I, when I know something or learn something, I just want to teach it. I also, my brain learns really well by teaching. So the more I teach something, the more I know it and understand it myself. And so there's kind of a side benefit uh, in that regard. But I, I just think it's the natural kind of way that I go about things. So uh, it was, to me, you know, the more that I've gotten into the teaching side of it, I actually enjoy it more than doing client work. You know, like if I had to choose between like, hey, let's teach concepts and uh, tr try to innovate workflows, which, you know, I'm known for a lot as well, is like, let's find the most efficient way to do these things. That's way more fun to me than sitting down and doing another client project, uh, if I'm if I'm being honest. So that's kind of how we got to where we are today. All right, thanks for that. Um, so what what type of martial arts were you um, teaching in, Kevin? So I was teaching Olympic Taekwondo, and oh. uh, it was mainly to kids. I was teaching a uh, I was teaching regular classes because I have a studio, you know. But then my big focus was on our competition team. So we actually had a travel competition team. So we were traveling all over, um, going to USAT events, AAU events, nationals, junior Olympics, things like that. So uh, that was the the most fun part of, of that side of things. So um, I don't know if you want to discuss this, but you know, you, you mentioned it in one of the videos or watch, you have dyslexia. I also have dyslexia as well, Kevin. So as how, has that affected your because i see kind of slight elements of yourself in me really um you're a bit more intent or i've been told i can be intense i i i get a feeling of intense intensity from you mm -hmm. um that might come from your martial arts thing but um get back to it jonathan um <laughs> um so did the this has the dyslexia also kind of determined the, your pathway business wise and your career paths? Uh, I don't, I don't think it's determined anything really. Um, it, it certainly does in, impact things, right? It's harder for me to learn certain things. Um, people see me all the time on videos, like get, you know, anything that's a binary situation, like <laughs> it's just, my brain confuses it constantly. Um, and you know, in development of automatic CSS, for example, there's just, uh, there's challenges that I'm trying to solve within the framework that probably take me two, three times longer to solve than maybe some other person, because my brain like goes and it just, it gets lost like inside the challenge, you know, and it's, 
it's like continues to run into points where it's like this is just not uh, computing. I can't really wrap my mind around it consistently enough uh, to get to the conclusion. So it just I have to sit there and and work at it a lot longer and, and a lot harder. So there's just challenges like that within the work that I do, but it it hasn't really stopped me from doing anything, and it hasn't um, caused me to go in a different direction uh, for any reason. All right, fair enough. So what do you think are some of the um, biggest challenges that web designers, you know, you've got to focus on WordPress, but um, I think you've got your own tribe. So that's one of the reasons why you can be very honest. I think one of the problems of the WordPress community it has some fabulous people in it and some fabulous work being done. And um, it's also got some real shits in it but every community every, does every doesn't. community yeah um <laughs> just is but um there's a lot of um kind of um hidden aggression in the community in general but i don't think you because you've got your own tribe you don't feel that you have to be part of that little dance really a uh, sense that you just want to be honest um they are your opinions, but you back them up with demos, don't you? Um, so um, what do you think are some of the major challenges web designers face in the coming year? Well, I think there's the obvious things. There's the AI side of stuff that everybody's concerned about. Uh, to me, it is um, just the pace, the pace of our industry, the, the, the quickness with how the tools change, how the practices and workflows change around the changes in those tools. Um, you look at stuff like CSS, you look at front end JavaScript frameworks. Uh, there's a lot of unknowns and there's a lot to know and there's a lot to keep up with. Um, also the idea that this is a very multidisciplinary field that we work in, you know, like we're, we're all building websites, but if you look at a, what a website actually is, there's just a tremendous amount of difference in the disciplines that go into building a successful website. I mean, anybody can build a website, but whether that website is successful or not is a completely different story. And if you look at the agency side of like, I live in the agency world. Uh, and in the agency world, you're responsible for building a successful website for the clients that hire you. And so you have to know things like not just web design, which that's what the agent the client says they want from the agency we we want a new web design or we want a new website and in their mind they're you know they don't understand all that goes into that but the agency to make that successful has to understand uh user experience and ui design principles and copywriting and seo and then good coding and then maintainable practices and on and on and on and on and on and so if if we only know web design, like an artist that learns how to use Webflow or something, but they don't really know any of these other areas. Sure, they can build a website, but it's probably not going to be very successful. So it's all of these different disciplines in an industry that's moving very, very, very quickly. There's just so much stuff to keep up with. There's so much stuff to know, so much stuff to learn, so much stuff to keep track of. And then that's on top of having to actually do the work, you know? So. It's just very, 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 I think, hard for maybe a, I, if I had to guess a lot of agency owners, freelancers, et cetera, constantly feel like they're maybe falling behind in this, right? And struggling to, to keep up. Maybe, maybe that's true, maybe it's not, I don't know. Everybody can speak for themselves, but if I had to guess, I think that that's one of the major challenges that, that we're facing. Yeah, I think I, I also get that sense, actually. I, I think it's always been there, isn't it, Kevin? But I do think it's gone on a little bit on steroids, hasn't it? A little bit. Um, and it, that's the thing. That's the problem is the acceleration is not linear. Like it's getting faster and faster and faster the, the, the more we go into it. And if you look at something like AI, I think that's only going to accelerate uh, the speed at which these, these things go. So, and these are people with, um, you know, an agency, like they're, they're looking at the future of their agency. Like, can I survive in this kind of environment? Just with the AI thing, a lot of people are already thinking like, I, how long are we going to be around? You know, um, now I tend to have a more you know pessimistic view of of what AI is able to do and what it will replace and things like that. But uh, it's you know it, it's making a lot of people lose sleep at night, and that's just one area. 
Well, I think around the AI question, I've had discussions on this show and um, it's, it's a very broad term, isn't it? Because you've got, AI, you've got the kind of um, language pattern recognition side of it and then you've got general AI, which is human kind of machine consciousness. I see no sign of machine consciousness. <laughs> um, I I really see what because um, but don't get me wrong. I'm utilising um, about three or four AI tools. I've been using them mm-hmm. for the past must be now almost eight months. Time goes quick, doesn't it? Right. Um, and I found them enormously helpful. Um, in my in the kind of work I do on a day to day basis, and they've become a key part of my day to day work. But I see I see the language um, recognition tools a bit like a glorified mechanical Turk. You know, um, it does it outputs what you want to some extent, but um, it's delusionary. It's not a human. Right being that actually thinks and right well some people think don't they not as many as people as i thought <laughs> but um that that's the, that's the english sarcasm coming out kevin uh, yep. um you seem to enjoy it you're smiling um i do i do yeah well you might not enjoy the next couple of questions but <laughs> 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 uh, dear, dear. all right but yeah i think it is just the pace but also i also it is a very complicated scenario because it's also driven by the book of business, the type of clients you are um, trying to get. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's a very, you know, um, I think one of the strengths of um, Divi um, and Nick Roach um, is that he really understood his target audience because I think he was one of them. Um um that small town designer part-time maybe have children that's doing design work part-time that's doing the business card the logo the graphics for the van everything for a, a small business client and the small client wants them to build a website yeah. and they only got a certain budget and they found divvy and all the community around Divi, it was really, I felt his positioning of Elegant Themes and Divi, I think he's one of the sharpest business individuals in WordPress, really. Um, I, I'm not a great admirer of Divi, never have, always made it, but I'm a great admirer of Nick mm-hmm. as a business individual. So I think it really depends where you're pitching, because that type of web design the limitations of budget and other factors is more different to uh, uh, a more larger um, agency that has like three or four or five 20 30 people inside it what do you reckon you reckon uh, was that a load of dribble or was i uh, you mean in terms of like how viable is Divi or or how good of a product? Well, is the Divi kind for? of skills and knowledge and because when you're a more generalist and mm-hmm. you've got to be a generalist because of the budget and the type of clients, um, the skills you need are a bit different. Then you go further up the food chain, you become a little bit more specialized, don't you? Yeah, I, I think there's a kind of a sub discussion there around like you mentioned budget a few times you know this is something i i like to talk with agency owners about i i think that um there needs to be there's a little bit of a paradigm shift that needs to happen around pricing and around budget and around what clients are are willing to pay for i mean the idea that um a lot of freelancers and even agencies uh, you know, you throw out a number like 3,500 and it's like, they're gasping and it's like, oh my God, that's so high. Like nobody would ever pay that for a website. Meanwhile, there's plenty of agencies doing, you know, $35,000 websites, um, routinely, you know? And so 
the idea that a, even a local small business and I, you know, I, like I said, I've been an entrepreneur all my life. Like I know how business works. I know how business owners think. I know how cheap business owners think, and I know how successful business owners think. And if you look at a martial arts studio, I think when we opened the martial arts studio, we found our location and we basically plopped down a hundred grand and we signed a lease for $6,000 a month, right? For the location. And so these are the numbers that real business owners like are used to encountering. And I think there's an epidemic of like agencies and freelancers who, you know, they're not, it's the classic e-myth thing. You know, people can go read the e-myth book where it's like, they're good at something, but they, they're not necessarily good at business. And so they're good at web design or good at development or whatever. And they're like, Hey, I can start an agency cause I have these skills. I'm good at these things, but they're not really a business owner and they don't think like business owners. And so they come in and they're doing their pricing and like, they don't know how to do their pricing. And they're just, well, okay, well, how many hours is this taking me? I just put an hourly wage on it and that's all a mess. Um, but then they, they're also, I think a lot of times just maybe kind of like they don't have a lot of money themselves or they've never really invested a lot in their business. In fact, to get a web design business off the ground, you need a computer. That's pretty much all you need. There's not a lot of overhead, right? And so they're coming up with numbers and they're like, I don't, I don't know that businesses will pay $3,500 for a website or $5,000 for a website. And there are a lot of cheap business owners out there, but the bottom line of all of this is that real businesses that really want to succeed and have what it takes to succeed have a lot more than $3,500 to invest and should be investing a lot more than $3,500. It's the same thing. Like if I want a great car, I don't go to the budget lot to get a great car, right? That has already has 125,000 miles on it. Probably not going to get me very far, but if I want to, if I, if I do want a great car and I want one with a good reputation, I go to a good brand and I pay a lot of money for a nice car. Right. And I know exactly what I'm going to get and the level of service that I'm going to get. And I'm going to be a much more successful car owner. Right. Not a great analogy, but it kind of gets the point across that like, if you have a business you care about, the idea that you would be looking to spend as little as possible or to get a budget person to, to basically build what amounts to a central online marketing hub for this business. Especially this is like local service-based businesses. My goal is to dominate my local area, like in search, in brand, in reputation, in everything. I can't dominate when I get a budget freelancer who is, you know, using bottom of the barrel tools to like build my site and manage it and so on. And doesn't really have all the knowledge and expertise and experience that they need. Good businesses know they need to hire a plus people to win. And so any business that's out there looking for a C or D player at a budget price is not really a serious business. It like in my estimation, right? Yeah, I, I I totally see where you're coming from, and I agree with about eighty percent of what you're saying. I think I think the variables in it is that um, there, there's a group of small business people, even in 2024, um, that don't really understand, don't know enough to make a value judgment. Mm -hmm. You know, they, and I feel sorry for them. Um, they just don't they don't have any knowledge to make a judgment a value business judgment about the value of what they're getting because they just don't know yeah you got others that don't have a budget because then they're, they're starting up or they've got a bigger, they, Which... they've got a bigger problem with their business and then you right. then and then there's the type that I also have come across a lot in my business career and they're business people and, they're, and basically they're trying it on a bit you know they're, they're they're trying to get the best value but they also are trying it on a bit um, um Here, here's what i'm here's what i'm getting at this is the point that i make over and over and over again it's it does it is you know if you can do a budget website for a business and let's say thirty five hundred dollars is the budget amount which a lot of the cheap business owners even struggle to try to pay that right the failure rate of businesses is insanely high. Yes. Okay. And the reason the failure rate of businesses is insanely high is because the people running those businesses aren't great at business and they don't hire good advisors and they don't hire good people to help their business succeed. And so what I tell agency owners is let's not like, <laughs> 
we either need to tell that person the truth about what it takes for their business to succeed and charge them accordingly, or we need to let them go off and just do their thing. But like, let's not be a part of their failure by serving budget-oriented clients with budget-oriented uh, level of service and not really knowing what we're doing. Like I'm always telling agency owners, like let's level up skills, let's level up our knowledge and expertise in these key areas so that we can really help people and stop just selling web design, but actually sell websites that do things for businesses in the real world. When I was starting out in entrepreneurship, I realized, uh, I, thankfully I was very young at the time, didn't matter whether I failed or succeeded, but there's a lot of business owners who come to us who are in their forties, right? There's people who are like, hey, I, I'm tired of living the corporate life. I wanna start this business on my own. I've gotten money out of my savings. Like, this is what I have. This is my one shot. If this doesn't work, I'm going back to the life that I know sucks. You know, I'm going back to a regular corporate job. And so they're gonna hire a provider, right? And if they hire a budget provider, if they hire a provider that doesn't really know what they're doing and how to help this business be successful, that person's dreams are, and that's why I talk about this all the time, because these are real people with real lives in the real world who are counting on us to help them succeed. Their dreams are about to go in a dumpster fire, right? And they're going to go with their tail between their legs back to corporate life because they, they went into business in the wrong with the wrong mindset. Everything's gotta be cheap, it's gotta be real budget. I don't have a lot of money. No, 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 we, we need to get more money, right? If we, if we wanna start out on the right foot, we need to start with a little bit more money and we need to hire the best people for the job to make sure this has the highest chance of succeeding. What we don't look at enough is the amount of businesses and the amount of websites that get built, the budget websites that get built and they don't exist a year later. That business doesn't exist a year later. The amount that that happens is astronomically high compared to budget website that actually helps a small business succeed. Most of the time they buy a budget website, it does absolutely nothing for their business. That business goes under because it has no you know, real business leadership or advisory or anything else. And we never hear about it ever again, right? And that just happens day after day after day after day after day. And I just personally don't really wanna have my hand in that process. When a business owner comes to me and they say, uh, I, have a, I have a low budget, you know, what's this website gonna cost? And I say, okay, here's what needs to happen for this website to be successful. I mean, you're looking at 15, $20,000 for a website like this, if you like, if we're gonna do real work in, in this area. And if they say, all I got is $2,500, like, well, we, there's nothing we can do really with $2,500, right? And so if, looking at it from my perspective where most businesses are used to signing a lease for six grand a month, right? Putting down 100,000 to build out a space. I mean, this is, this is the kind of money you have to come up with to, to make a real go at it, unless, unless the business owner themselves is very skilled and can do a lot of the work themselves and not have to pay providers. But if you pay budget providers, you're gonna get low level work and the chances of failure are gonna be astronomically higher than if you collected a little bit more money and hired better providers out of the gate. Yeah, you know, but you know, cause uh, when, I, when I moved to America, I was working for, in Northern Nevada, I was working as a developer for um, two to three local agencies. One was a very large PR firm. Another one is still the largest um, web design digital marketing company in Northern Nevada. And they were hiring loads of juniors. They they squeezed me constantly. They didn't really want to pay my rate. Um, they were constantly, when that that is a, a freelancer working for, for established PR firms and digital agencies, that's your life, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, this cut, you know, trying to get the cheapest is, um, and, that, and then you've got the whole subject of uh, offshoring as well. So, um, so, but we could make the whole episode about this and you have to come back hopefully later on in <laughs> yeah. the year and we can have a yeah. discussion about that because that, that's a reality as well, isn't it? Not only um, AI. So um, how are we doing for time? Um, yeah, let's go for our middle break. We've only we only covered two of these, but the last two questions are quite easy. So I think it's time for us to have our 
middle break. I've really enjoyed the discussion so far with Kevin. I think it's been very interesting. We will be back in a few moments, folks. This podcast episode is brought to you by Lifter LMS, the leading learning management system solution for WordPress. If you or your client are creating any kind of online course, training-based membership website, or any type of e-learning project, Lifter LMS is the most secure, stable, well-supported solution on the market. Go to lifterlms.com and save 20% at checkout with coupon code PODCAST20. That's PODCAST20. Enjoy the rest of your show. We're coming back, folks. It's been an interesting discussion with Kevin. I knew it was going to be. Uh, um, uh, I was looking forward to it. Um, before we go into the second part of the show, um, where we're going to be talking about Gutenberg and I'll be seeing if Kevin is still pulling the arrows out of his back. Uh, um, so, uh, but before that, I just want to point out, if you're looking for a great WordPress hosting provider that specializes in learning management systems and community websites built on BuddyBoss, and you don't want to deal with the normal headaches, why don't you look at becoming a partner with WP Tonic? We've got some great partial part partnership plans you can find more and it also supports the show as well and we i know your law tribe um you can find all about that by going over to wp-tonic.com slash partners wp-tonic.com slash partners and find out more about that we can have a chat what more could you ask for <laughs> god knows all right all we go um well kevin you got into a little bit of trouble didn't you kevin you know um the great leader posted a twitter um he was probably late at night he was on the whiskey as he is he was knocking a few whiskey saw one of your twitters um i think it all started with you going on um jamie's um first of all how did that um I love Jamie. Um, he, he's a total Gutenberg fanboy. He admits it. Um, I'm more like Paul from WP Tuts in my general attitude towards it. Um, I can see the enormous possibilities. I'm extremely frustrated with the situation. Um, so frustrated that I've given up on it to some extent. Um, it, it sometimes. Um, so how... You got on to this um, video podcast thing with Jamie. Who are who organised it? Was it Jamie asked you to come on? Was it? Yeah, if I remember correctly, uh, he had he had messaged me about coming on. And I give him juice because I was surprised when I saw it and I watched it, and it was one of the most hilarious interviews I've watched in a long time because the body. <laughs> It wasn't what was said, it was the body language, because um, as you just let it go and you told it the way that you saw it, his eyes just got wider and wider and wider. And he really didn't want you on that interview in the end. He was very English, he was very diplomatic. But he, <laughs> to say that what you were saying wasn't going down well, would be the understatement of the century, would it? Was you sensing that? Because I, I sense you a bit like me. As I get that, there's a wicked side of me, and I would just play into it, and it would. I find it. <laughs> no, I find it feel. No, I mean, I, I, I knew ahead of time. Like I looked into his content and things like that. So I, you know, I knew he was a a big block editor guy. Uh, but you know, I'm not going on shows to like just agree with whatever the the guest normally says or does or pushes or promotes or whatever um i just like you said i just go and i you know i tell it like i believe it to be and i've i've always done that in my content and i've always told people like if if you think i'm teaching something wrong or you think that um you have an argument to to anything that i say 
go ahead and um, you know demonstrate, demonstrate the difference, or demonstrate how how you know you can do it better. And I'd love to see that. And I've always put that out as like an open thing. The the problem that I have is that uh, people want to, like you said, shoot you know shoot people in the back with arrows. These are the people who typically can never seem to find you know the record button on any of their devices. You know, it's well, like, they have been to some extent. They've been sending you little Twitter videos and mm -hmm. video wow. stuff. Yeah. You know, so, lovely, lovely. You know, uh, um, so generous of them to send it to you, isn't it? Kevin? Well, the thing the thing is, is like uh, most the, most of the time, what I get is just you know, it's either personal attacks or it's um, you're wrong, but they don't really want to show how how I'm wrong. It's just let's just tell them that he's wrong, uh, and then you know, it's it's. Uh, it, very minimally, very minimally. Now, with the, with the Gutenberg thing, I, I do have to say, right? So, and I don't know exactly which video you're talking about, but we did, we did the, I did the Jamie interview. Okay, that was one thing. Then I did very recently a yeah, I watched like, it and I you a know that I tried to build in Gutenberg, right? Yeah, that, that I'm not, I'm not going to mention his name because I, I don't want him to get grief. But mm -hmm. he, um, and this is only my take on it. Um, I've met many like him, um, and they, they're. They're honest, but um, and stereo. I don't like stereotypes because I've had it stereotypes placed on me. But he is very typical of a certain type in the WordPress community, um, and their attitudes. And right. they're not being deceitful, but they live in their little bubble as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I, you were getting hot and bothered a little bit. And I could understand well, why you, the, you were in, getting hot and bothered a little bit because yeah. it was insanity to right. some extent. Right. Well, he, yeah, I mean, and I wasn't even going to bring him up. I already dismissed him like in my mind. Right. And I think the whole community already dismissed it as well. Um, Cause they, they can watch the videos if they want to, but um, you know, I, I made a very, my video wasn't directed at anybody it was it was literally directed at the block editor it was here i'm gonna build something in the block editor you're gonna watch me and it's it ended up being a huge struggle and a and a real problem and there was things i just could not do that just you just cannot do them in the block editor with native blocks and that's just a fact and it's you can't get around that fact and so i put that video out there it was very you know calm it was very just like here's here are the facts here's the experience and then i said if there is a better way, please demonstrate it. Now, the first person who stepped up to the plate, giant swing and a miss, okay, and came with like insults. And, and the, the other thing that bothers me, obviously, in the insult side of things is when somebody insinuates that like, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, like, yeah, I because, think that was the like, thing that was getting you going yeah, a little go bit. To a, wasn't go it? to the chat. Yeah, go to the channel. There's like hundreds of hours of me doing this stuff right well okay. i don't agree so with like, everything you say but you definitely you definitely know you're definitely a professional web designer and you know what you're talking about right so the idea that we're going to come with that as like the initial attack and then the second attack is like everything i say and do is just to make a buck basically on, on by how, the way, how dare you try and make right. a living well, for uh, you well, and your family it's Kevin. very i found it extremely difficult to make um a buck off of a builder that doesn't even have an affiliate program like we could just start there like so the person doesn't even do an ounce of homework right just comes out of the gate you're, with insults and, i'm so interrupt kevin yeah. um obviously it's difficult because i like my little sarcastic comments mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and there's a bit of a lag Ah, but, you know, how dare, how dare you try and make a living, Kevin? And how dare you not work for the WordPress Gutenberg project for free and contribute hours of your time Correct. for nothing? You know, how dare you not do that? You, you know, it's just disgusting, Kevin. I, and and the, the <laughs> idea that you can just dismiss everything that somebody says or does because, because they've made a, a dollar, right? Like the minute... The minute somebody's made some money, oh, well, just everything that they say or do from this point forward can can be just blindly dismissed now. So I just pushed all of that aside. And what I was going to say is there was actually two block editor, uh, I don't know what we want to call developers, whatever you want to call them, uh, who produced very thoughtful responses, very respectful responses, very... Um, insightful just like i watched the video and i was like this is exactly what i wanted to see thank you 
And this is the conversation, this is the kind of thing that actually moves all of us forwards, right? Where, because I, I think, you know, there's a giant chunk of agencies and freelancers who are not being represented by the direction of the block editor. And I think it's because the developers working on the block editor do not, honestly, do not know how we work or, or what our workflow looks like or what we care about. Like you said, they're kind of in a, in a little bit of a, a bubble, right? And so I wanted to juxtapose, like, here's what it looks like to work in the block editor using our workflow. And we can't do it. It's just not possible. And my main point was, this is a bad thing because they claim that the block editor is for everybody and it's not for everybody. It's not for a large, there's a large chunk of people that it is not for in its current state. And then I wanted to show what my workflow looks like in a page builder like Bricks. And so I did the, here's me doing it in, in the block editor. Then I followed up with a video. Here's me doing it in Bricks. And it took 17 minutes in Bricks and there were specific requirements that we had to meet. I met every single one of those requirements, requirements in Bricks could not meet some of those requirements in the block editor. And it showed a very objective comparison of like, this is the workflow that we live in. The block editor does not provide this. And that's the problem, right? And so then some block editor uh, people came and made some very insightful, respectful videos, which I watched. I still didn't, uh, it, it, I mean, if you look at the arguments that I made, I mean, they still kind of confirm that the block. Oh yeah, not uh, I right? to I'm totally agree. They're with into you. VS Code uh, and they're making yeah. custom, you know, blocks yeah. and this and that and custom block styles and they're going back yeah. and forth between VS Code and the block. Yeah, editor. I did. Well, I did. I've actually spent. Um, I don't always do my research, but um, I wanted. I've been really looking forward to this discussion with yeah. you. So I. Um, with a little spare time, because I normally work 80 hours because I'm trying to build <laughs> my own retirement pot. So I'm yeah. not bankrupt when I'm 70. Uh, um, um, so I work on average about 80 hours a, a week already. But I have spent a lot of time in the background listening to your stuff and the other videos. And I've got to say, I, um, yeah, um, I think a lot, a lot of what you were saying was factually correct. Um, the only thing is, it was bit down to that for that question in the set, the first half of the show about the type of developer, the type, the budget. Um, I don't really think, but I can also see your response because I, I think the great leader, when he was on the whiskey, he kind of, he, I think you had to respond in a way because he kind of he made that situation appear. Um, and bless him, um, he's he's supposed to be coming on the show, so I'm going to have a chat with him as well. Um, um, but I just, yeah, um, I think Rich Tabo, you know, since he's been on the Gutenberg project, he's done fantastic work, and because it really was totally drowning, mm -hmm. it was totally drowning. You now, at your point, it's five years. Yeah. Now, come on, you know. God's sake. Um, but it really was drowning. Then Rich, he's done some amazing, because he's an experienced individual. And, uh, um, but then I thought, yeah, you know, I can see, you know, it's going somewhere. And then we had this full site editing lark, you know, and my attitude towards that is very similar to Paul on WP Tuts. You know, you've got a frag, you know, you it's just fragmented, it's yeah. off, off again, or whatever journey it's going on, you know, who knows where, it's like the yellow brick road, you know, you don't know where it, you know, in Kansas, you don't know where it's going. Right. Um, and um, so, but I see the real power, you just see the possibilities and power. So um, we were kind of, using animator and we still do a bit i know divvy madness i know um um oh the comments are starting to come in now uh uh, uh um, <laughs> on. so divvy madness um as i call animator you know because so i i'm not active i only inflict myself on my own projects now uh um but I actually did know how to code, actually, Kevin. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and looking at the code that Divi produces, oh, God. But, you, have, you know. Mm -hmm. um, 
Well, and I, you know, I was hoping with Divi 5.0 that that was going to be something that they addressed. And well, we can, you know, we can discuss the woes because Divi's, you know, Divi's got its um, not um, I've got Divi on the main. Elamate has got its own problems, and so has Divi. Really, it, well, it's always had its problems, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, um, but um, I decided um, I, I've been using Cadence, mm -hmm. and it's not. And um, Ben, the um, chief developer and the founder of Cadence, and he sold the company. He's doing some really great stuff. And but unless you utilise something like Cadence, and there's some other options as well, yeah, you couldn't even consider using Gutenberg to build anything of any right professional level. And I know I'm going to get loads of hate mail coming my way but that's the in my opinion that's the truth well what i've discovered in in all of this is that they um you can you can you just have to open yourself up to changing your entire workflow to do it right the workflow that most people are are used to doing and the the biggest dis disconnect is this idea that WordPress is democratizing publishing and that the block editors for everybody. And so you should be able to come over a Wix, a Wix user should be able to come over and just hop into WordPress and do the things that they do in Wix, but in WordPress and enjoy the open source nature of it. And I, that whole narrative is, is what exactly what I said. It's marketing BS, right? Because that's just not the experience. And I proved it. I proved it in the sense that a Wix user right now to come over and do what they do in Wix has to add VS code into the mix. They have to add React into the mix or PHP into the mix or something else. They can't just come over and start building stuff like they do. This is not reality in any sense, right? Um, so, it, and I said, that's fine. That's fine. I'm okay with having to open VS code and do stuff. Just don't tell me, just don't tell me that it's for everybody at that point and that we're democratizing publishing. This is where the disconnect is. The disconnect is in the marketing versus the reality of the experience. And so that's really what, where the problem is. Uh, and, and that's why I've learned uh, watching, uh, especially the latest two videos. Let me, let me get their names. Cause I just want to give them a shout out for a second because we saw the wrong approach to take, you know, when I make a video and somebody wants to, to, um, you know, put their two cents into the ring, there's a wrong way to do that. There's a right way to do that. The first person did, did it the wrong way. The next two people did it a hundred percent right. And I loved watching their video. I love their response. I'm going to get their names right here. Um, so we have, uh, Brian, I, I believe it's Cords, C O O R D S. Brian Cords, phenomenal video response. Uh, and Danielle Zaccaro, phenomenal video response. I found those very, very insightful, and I found them to be um, very uh, just like, well, insightful is the word, right? I didn't know what the workflow people was. I didn't know what they were going to propose as the workflow. So it was very insightful to see their approach. And they showed, hey, you can accomplish this in the block editor. It just takes a completely different approach. Well, Brian's, you know, I'm not a great fan of Brian because he's part of a posse that um, about over a year ago accused me of being a racist. You know, so he's not on my Christmas list. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, and I was gen I was generous with that guy, and he kind of just. But that's this certain WordPress crowd. That's what they're like. Um, I but I, else, but when all it came I know is the response that was given to me, which was the, exactly the kind of response that that I was looking for. Uh, but the the other bottom line in all of that, if you watch their videos, and so they're proposing, well, if you want to do it in the block editor, this is what your workflow needs to look like. And I would still just show that, guys, I did this in Bricks in 17 minutes, and it's fully scalable, it's fully maintainable, it's it met all of the requirements, and every response video, I'll just say, has taken well longer, way, yeah, but they, way they longer. Don't, but they don't minutes. even, they, it's obvious they haven't watched your video. Because Brian said he did. Well, he said he yeah. Well, he it. did. Yeah, but the thing is, you were making the. But you, he's. I did watch a little bit of it, even though he's not on my Christmas list, <laughs> as I say, my London slang. Um, um, I don't wish you meal, but it's just you know. Um, you, you started talking. You got to add this plugin. You got to add that plugin. Right. You, you were, but your point of the video was native, right? It right. couldn't do an right. intermediate layout. And Correct. you got it's a cute, yeah. you chose, obviously there was some pre-planning, but I actually thought you were quite fair because I don't, right. 
what you were trying to do, any intermediate front end developer, that's the type of work that they do on a regular basis, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, my main argument was it's this is not that if you look at that layout and your brain thinks um, custom blocks, custom block styles, PHP, React, th this problem is solved. This layout is solvable with HTML and CSS. The idea that we have to go off into all of these other lands, which are not work like, you know, if we go back to the democratization and the for everyone concept, HTML and CSS are, I believe, way closer to everyone than React and PHP and using multiple different editors to try to accomplish this inside of a WordPress concept that's kind of new. Um, it's just, we're, it's, it's a very, very convoluted approach when a simple approach, the fundamental approach, the approach that we've used since the beginning of HTML and CSS can, can get it done, right? Um, and so that was my biggest thing is like, hey, if you want this to be the workflow, tell us this is the workflow and I'm good with that. I'll, I'll adopt that if I need to. I'll tell to you what it. I would like to see actually a more constructive thing is for you and Brian Gardner to do a video together because Brian, I've got the utmost respect for Brian. Yeah. You know, former founder of Studio Press. He's another, you know, doing some good work in Gutenberg because I'm, I just don't know enough now to really give a, a, a opinion. Um, kind of um, actually watching your videos, I might join your group because you, you've actually got my me my enthusiasm because I really enjoyed web design. It's very creative, and I might actually as, get back into it a little bit, mm -hmm. but I haven't really got the time. But um, it was great because. Um, but I'm um, doing a video, doing a joint video or discussion with Brian because I, I have the greatest respect for Brian and I know he really knows his stuff. And I think that would be a more constructive discussion, you and with him. Yeah, I'd love he's, to do that kind of stuff. Because he's very, um, and he might be up for it. So, um, so I think the biggest concern about all this is that um, there's a duality here. Um, Frank meant because because of the vacuum that was Gutenberg, which was getting better than this full site editing. And I think that's, and I'm just making, I'm just pulling guesses out the air here, really, Kevin. I have no inside information at all. I think it's really driven by the requirements. And I think you touched about, touched on it about the requirements that wordpress.com needs you know they want this wix competitor um and um all this witch's brew of bad feeling that has imploded in the wordpress community about how the the open source project is run Matt's position in it, he's kind of managerial style, which seems to be a whiskey bottle at night. <laughs> and uh, bless his heart. Um, at least he's a human being. He's not one of these grey corporate CEO types. At least, at least, it's, at least he's who. Um, but... Um, there's a witch's brew. It all imploded just before Christmas. Um, you got that. Um, and this kind of, obviously it's open source, so you want it, it's one of the powers that new people, Bricks is an example. Bricks, you know, the developers behind it are extremely experienced. Um, I think they're based in Germany, aren't they? The lead yeah. developer. Um they're very experienced, but it's amazing what they've built. And it's one of the powers of WordPress that somebody can build something like that and enter the market. But the the downside is fragmentation. Yeah. Um, trying to explain to somebody that's looking to start WordPress. But it's such a it's to me, it's such an unnecessary mess, isn't it? I, I it doesn't even make any logic for you how it's ended up this way have you got any insights about how it ended up this way well it, it well i mean yeah it's it's the nature of themes and plugins and everybody can can build something and bolt it on to to this main thing 
and I don't think that that's that's the real problem that we face here is that the idea that you could build a Wix like experience or a Squarespace like experience, or you can democratize publishing um, and and create a, a, a product that's for everyone in this kind of environment, because even and that's why I did it with native blocks, because in order to satisfy that requirement, it's hard to get somebody to come over from Wix. And I explained this on the whole live stream. And I said, I don't think this is the experience Matt wants people to have. And I've never personally met Matt. Um, I don't, I've never had an extended conversation with him. Um, looking from afar, I, I think he, he's a nice guy, right? It's like, he, and like you said, he seems very down to earth. He seems very accessible and approachable. And these, these are all fantastic things, right? So I don't have anything to, to say bad about Matt. I'm just looking at the goal of WordPress, the stated vision and mission of WordPress. And if I were to put myself in Matt's shoes as a business owner, thinking of as a business owner who says, I want Wix people to be able to come over here. I want Squarespace to, people to be able to come over here. Well, if that's the case, when they install WordPress, you can't tell them that the first thing they have to do is go choose from one of a thousand different block systems, right? Well, which one do you want to go to? Well, they don't know. I mean, what now? The, so step one is like, let me do a bunch of research and figure out which direction I want to go. Because the native controls, the native blocks don't get the job done unless, unless I know React and PHP. And then, then I can actually get to, but no Wix user wants to do that. So that can't be the solution. You can't tell them, well, oh, choose from one of a thousand block systems and themes or or get out your vs code and start writing some react and some php you're, you'll be off to the races okay we've already lost this person this this idea that we're going to bring people from these other builder communities like this is a fantasy well yeah um i think you can only do it if you kind of um you ha you have a kind of module structure you know, you have the basic editor, and then you can bolt on another module if you you want to do a certain you, amount, you, and then you, you bolt on another yeah. module if you want to be a professional web. Because if one of the problems with Animator is you give that to a client, you say, you know, obviously you've got different titles, as I call it. I don't even know if that word <laughs> exists. Um, I think it's to do with my dyslexia. I just create words, so I call it. I call Animator different different titles. Mm -hmm. All right. Div divs everywhere. I find it offensive to my origins of a web developer, but it does the job, and it you know it, it's very powerful and it's got a big community. But they they've had their own problems, haven't they? Because they they seem to have gone. You know, they're trying to get. I think they're losing market share to some other builders now, and and I think it, their problems were driven by the VC money. But yeah. um, on the other hand, I think the great leader's problems is people don't realise, and it's on Wikipedia, that he's, tooken, he's taken, or Automatic have taken, almost $900 million of investment over six investment um, periods. So I'm sure those investors want something for their money because um, um, that's not loose change, is it? Almost right. $900 million. I don't know how much money Alimator took from their VC, but I think they seem to they seem to want... The, I think the problem with Alimator is they wanted it both ways. Obviously, their origins, the way they got traction was through the... And I've seen this with other people. Their origin was through the WordPress community, um, the plugin, and then. But that is not what the VC. The VCs want a SaaS product, so mm. that they concentrated on the SaaS, um, and they wanted. Um, but then that has that has consequences around the plugin and that. Is that making any sense, Kevin? Or am I waffling? Yeah, I mean, I think what we're getting at is like what would the approach be you know what would a viable approach be and i think i you know we we talked to, ahead of the the call about this idea of you know can an environment even be built for like you know advanced developers and beginners alike and what would that process look like and so if it were me uh and and i was trying to make this a democratized publishing situation a for everyone editor i think if we break it down to fundamentals the question would be should we build a, a piece of software 
that is aimed at the lowest common denominator user, the ultra basics, the I don't know really what I'm doing, I point and click in Wix. Should we build it for that person and then add on what advanced users need? Or that's option one. Option two would be, do we build a tool that is great for advanced users and the exact kind of people who really you know, made WordPress what it is um, and then scale it back for yeah. beginners? Right. And I, to me, I think we, if we look at a lot, this is the problem with Divi, right? Is an element or for me, they were designed for lower common denominator users and then yeah. have tried to accommodate more advanced users. Well, I think, Divi, I, think I think Divi got their, you know, their um, Gutenberg, they announced it. Where is it? Um, I yeah. think they've got their own problems. Um, sorry, interrupt. But yeah, I totally agree. I see where you're coming from. Yeah, to me, I think it, it's better to work backwards, right? Let's build the tool that ever that's a very powerful tool, and then find ways to scale it back. And Bricks is a perfect example of this in many ways. Uh, you can go in, and they built it with a class first workflow. This is a workflow that advanced web designers are used to using. This is the fundamentals of web design, HTML and CSS. We're going to use classes. We're going to be able to organize those classes, style those classes, attach those classes to el any elements that we want. We're going to be able to change HTML tags to whatever we want. Everything can be done. How well, there's no limitation inside of Bricks, but a beginner. A beginner that doesn't know, I don't know what a class first workflow is as a beginner. Well, guess what? In Bricks, you can come in and you could just turn that thing off. And then all the classes interface goes away and it now it looks like Elementor, right? And so Bricks built for the advanced user and you can scale it back easily. I think that's the way to go. I don't think you're ever going to win when you have the lowest common denominator user in mind. You build for them and then just try to make it work for advanced users around that. Yeah, I think, yeah, thanks for that. I, I didn't think it that way. I, I think you're right about that, actually. All uh, right. Um, got a couple. Before we go into the last two questions that are kind of more fun questions, I, I thought I'd do this little game with you. Yeah. <laughs> I like my games, all right? Um, I'm going to... I'm going to give you some builders, some Gutenberg and some other builders. And I like you just to give your reaction, like in one <laughs> sentence or okay. two sentences. All right. All right. Right. So, like, there, was a, there was a BBC show, I think, did this concept. Nothing I do, Kevin, is original. Uh, um, uh, is not original anymore? Probably not. I don't <laughs> think even I, I'm original. I'm just some... I realise now I'm just a, a thing that a load of BBC television as a kid I sucked in and BBC Radio 4. Any originality is probably a delusion, actually, but who knows. Uh, um, <laughs> so let's start off um, breakdance. So just uh, one sentence. One or two sentences, your <laughs> reaction if somebody said breakdance to you. Uh, breakdance... Uh clean code workflow some workflow issues uh which are, which are fixable very very fixable um but that's my general consensus right now yeah my problem with it is the owner mm -hmm. <laughs> I, you know, and his I, and his business choices that's my problem with it the thing i've started doing because the situation that i i i honestly don't care anymore about what owners do or don't do or or because my job especially you know creating automatic css creating frames creating these products and, and services for people my job is to serve my users and my community and for, for example breakdance is actually a really good example right so a lot of my community wants to be able to use automatic css in breakdance and so i look at these builders as can we because we have a minimum set of standards for us to integrate well, with the builder yeah. He and seems to be he seems to be doing well on his website. He's saying that they've got seventeen thousand users. Yeah, yeah, he's done a fantastic job, right? So, and they've gotten over the hump, and uh, he's obviously extremely talented. And so, a lot of our users want to use ACSS in Breakdance. So, my job is not to worry about yeah. any of the politics or drama. My job is to say, can we integrate with Breakdance? And Breakdance is an integratable builder. It ha it meets a lot of the minimum requirements that we look for, where many, many, many builders do not. And so we have to take, we have to give a serious look to, to, to break dance. Yeah, right. Cadence WP. 
Uh, I looked at it. It did not meet our minimum requirements for, for integration. Uh, there's some divception issues, lack of variables and inputs, um, no class first workflow, no class workflow at all. Uh, it's just, it's not my cup of tea. I look for uh, things that give the developer uh, points of control, global points of control for maximum maintainability and scalability of a website. Because I think that's one of the most important things when we're building sites. Um, other than clean code and accessibility and things like that, maintainability is very, very, very important. The idea that all these sites are built like a card is used a thousand times across the site. Yeah. And if if a, if a client comes along and says, I don't like the border, color, spacing, whatever of that card, that we're going to go copy paste a change a thousand times across all that's just this is not the situation that we want to be in. It's not the life we want to live. So I look for maintainability and, um, you know, cadence has no maintainability that from what I can tell until they have, until they integrate with like partially synced patterns in Gutenberg or something like that, there's just no way to ensure maintainability. So it's a non-starter for, for me. Yeah. I, I, I was expecting, and I, I totally understand your position on that. We're using it because uh, I really believe in Ben and it's one of the few frameworks that, um, enable us to help clients we provide a, a set of starter themes based yeah. on cadence and then we help them because we've got a lot of diy people on our hosting but we are a bit like hosting plus is how i yeah. kind of describe it so it I, suits do, I do want to do, do wanna say that you know when i say uh it's not for us or um, no, I, I totally it. understand why you the, said that. The situation could change tomorrow. Like, I, I have nothing against any of these He tools, is very right? responsive, Ben, yeah. to inputs, and he's very intelligent. But they're yeah. trying to build, they've got a lot of things they're doing. So on and a their... number, Yeah, and a number of these uh, uh, theme developers and builder developers contact me, and they, they want to work with me to make yeah. some changes right that would help in all of these different areas and so the more open they are to that like the more i i really am interested in their tool and so i'm completely open i'm just tell, i'm telling it like it is right now but tomorrow the situation may be different if they make uh you know necessary this changes. is only a bit of fun Kevin. yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, i just right. I, but you right, know, uh, everybody right. like they're not they're not going to take this in context right they're going to take oh, it all no, out it's of recall. context as much as they more can. people are going to blank yeah. you off twitter because Correct. you know, you know yeah. don't, oh, i got yeah, eight thousand yeah. more arrows in my back after this yeah. after this interview it, cool. so i have to like make it a point to hey let's just everybody needs to right. know okay it's not personal right beaver builder uh old school bloated not up to standards um extremely popular extremely po but again didn't meet our minimum re requirements for for integration um so i and and when i look at a builder you know i look for very specific things and if i hit too many early roadblocks and i'm like it's just it's not gonna work i don't look that much deeper right uh, unless I'm asked to, and then I and then I will. So it's not fair for me to to go off into all these different areas of what's wrong with it. All I can say is no, it didn't meet our quick... yeah, it didn't meet our minimum requirement. Yeah, I totally agree. With you. It's a shame because the people behind it are some of the nicest piece of yeah. people I've met. Very very generous people. I, f I I in some ways they should have been hired at the beginning of this Gutenberg thing. They should have the great there's leader. A lot, should... Yeah, there's a lot of soup like a ton of talent in in the like Elementor's got a ton of insanely talented people on their team, right? Beaver as well. Um, a, some of this, some of this is when they built the product, there was a certain paradigm. And there's a lot of technical debt and they yeah. can't just whip up, you know, these like modernized changes and, and, and direct, like I said, in the very beginning, this is the pace that this stuff is moving at is, is insane. And so a lot of it is just a technical debt kind of situation where there's probably a lot of stuff they want to do. In fact, I talked it at WordCamp to, to uh, someone on the, on the Beaver Builder team, and there's a lot of stuff they want to do. And it's just not, they don't have a magic wand for this kind of stuff. Right. But they're on board with it. And that's what's fantastic. It, it, as long as they're on board with it, hey, let's let's get it done. Like, like, Katie's Katie's questions. Oh, I've got to love this WordPress crowd. Welcome, welcome to the show, Andrew. Yeah, well, this, yeah, I don't think anything I could say. You know, this is this is a martial art arts trainer. I don't think any of my questions are going to make Kevin squirm. Uh, um, <laughs> I think it's going to be the other way. Uh, um, so, 
Uh, oh God, you can't laugh at you. Uh, the tavern. I don't know what's going to happen with the. I, I just. I just went on the tavern to read the um, replies. Really, spec. What about Spectra? All the. I, I've not found a um, a block editor, builder, whatever you want to call it, that really meets minimum requirements, except for. And I, and I haven't looked into it in detail enough. Uh, mainly time limitations, but uh, Green Shift is one that's probably the closest. Quick, I've, never, quickly, I've never even heard of that. Oh, you never heard of Green Shift? See, I'm, I'm one of the, see, the other thing people have to understand is that when I put out comments about builders and things like this, I, I don't think a lot of people, they're not in my situation necessarily. So it's, it's my job to know what these builders do and the code that they output and the features that they have. I literally have a local install right here with nearly every builder and block system that I can just queue up <laughs> one. This was take up. Yeah. So people will say, oh, I don't, you know, they, it's, they'll criticize, but it's like, I'm actually in every single one of them. I know the limitations of every single one of them. Um, so it's not just me like talking crap. It's like, I, I literally looked at it. I can queue it up anytime I want and I can try to build something in it in a moment's notice. If anybody has a question about it, I can just queue it up and do it. And I do this on live streams, right? I know, so, I, watched, I, watched a couple. I watched your last one. Yeah, so it's not well, just- I was listening to your yeah, last one. It's like, I, I have experience with all of these. I was answering a thousand emails as I was listening <laughs> to you. Uh, um, so on we go. Um, you're right for another five, 10 minutes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're all right. Uh, um, um, what shall we choose? Um, yeah, let's choose Divi. Because I, I I forgot the um he's been on my show you went on a podcast recently yeah. the guy's a great div I forgot he's another aimed at web designers giving them advice I've forgotten the name uh, he went on the interview I was on his show yeah I forgot his name but he's a great divvy fan so mm. you are very diplomatic actually Kevin uh, <laughs> I, um, and I, uh, I want to be you know I I want because because again it's um. That's the only way to build the bridges, right? Like, I, I think there are, you know, I, I firmly believe in the maintainability side of things where Divi has presets, right? So if we're talking about Divi now, uh, Divi has this concept called presets, Breakdance has a concept called presets, Generate has a concept called presets. So I wrote an article that presets are not classes. They don't act like classes. They don't behave like classes and they have a lot of limitations over classes. And I think, Another fundamental part of all of this is well, that... Well, can I just interrupt? You were yeah. extremely fair with your with um, with that video you did because you didn't even go into the topography side of things mm -hmm. because that, you know, it's a ridiculous situation with that, with Nate Goo. You were generous. You didn't even go... You could have flamed that as much yeah, as right. you liked. You didn't even choose to go yeah. down that route, did I, you? Yeah, I try to be as fair as I possibly can. I try to be as objective as I possibly can. And I'm just stating the, the, the facts as I see them. And I think fundamentally, when we go back to, do we, do we build a product for the lowest common denominator or do we build a product for people who know what they're doing and then scale it backwards? You know, the divvies, the elementors, they so don't what, what have... do you think, what's your reaction when I say divvy to you then, Kevin? That it's, it's, it, um, it, it lacks maintainability. Okay. So th then they tried to add presets to improve the maintainability. Um, uh, but they, the reason they introduce a concept like presets instead of a concept like classes is because they're targeting the lowest common denominator. They have a feeling in their head. And by the way, I'm an educator. Okay. And I did a whole free course, 19 episodes long, right? Uh, at least an hour each. Anybody that wants to learn page building and web design in the modern era can go watch this course 100% for free, okay? And I teach a class-first workflow. Well, I think that's yeah. one of the problems because, you know, they've got this technical debt and then you've got Flexbox, you've got CSS grids. Well, but, you've, got but, a whole, but, you've got a whole different... But they're rebuilding Divi, Divi 5.0, right? The, well, they've been saying that for the, you know, it's getting almost uh, like the five it's, years it's of Gutenberg, isn't it? I'm going to give them credit. Give them credit. It's, it's almost here, okay? But it's not going to have classes in it. It's still going to have presets. It's not going to have any, nothing. They're only fixing the builder workflow. That's what they're really focused on. And the builder speed, and I think that's all great things. Fine and dandy. But the reason these builders have presets instead of classes is because they think that users are not smart enough to understand the concept of classes. And when I educate, I because it's really not that hard. Well, um, it's kind of linked to what I was hinting at in, and you, 
I'm, I'm going to think about your position because I this building the top one and then not from a bottom scenario. Yeah. That was a new paradigm that you've put to me, and I I like it, and I'm going to think about it. Um, but that's why I was talking about in the first half about Divi because I think they're they're aiming in it at a, what they see as their users. Mm -hmm. Is that making sense, Kevin? And you, and I think your position is they they should build it from the top and then they could modify it so it meets. So. I see where well, you're yeah, coming and from. I, I was very hopeful about Divi 5.0. I was very hopeful about it because Divi has severe accessibility problems. It has severe divception code output problems. Uh, it has maintainability problems. So I was like, what are they going to do with 5.0 to address these things? Well, the divception not addressed. I don't know how much the accessibility has been addressed, but I it's a couple accessibility experts that I'm in contact with who have tested it. And they basically relate to me still kind of a shit show. Uh, in that regard. And so a lot of the technical side of things was not addressed when they had a perfect opportunity to address it. I would love to know why those kinds of things weren't addressed. Um, and then the maintainability side of things, again, it's like this concept of presets. It's like, why are we, why are we introducing this new concept that has limitations when there is a concept that's existed since the beginning of web design, uh, that doesn't have these limitations and just educate the user on, and I bring up Webflow all the time. Let's, because people will say, "Oh, you can't. Nobody can educate." Okay. Did Webflow, you have to? Did you have to swear? Web. No. <laughs> I, I like. I. I have so much respect for Webflow from what they've done from a tool yeah. slash and just a vision for their tool. They said, "You know what? We're going to build." That's what they did. We're going to build the interface that actual professionals can use. And then what we're going to do? All these designers who aren't devs who want to come over here and build websites, we're going to educate them on how to do this. It's like a novel concept, right? that's exactly the boat that we should be in, right? Because that's what elevates the industry. That's what, it doesn't elevate the industry to make everybody and their mom able to, to say, I, I'm an agency now and I'm a freelancer now and I can build websites for businesses. Cause this takes us right back to, we're throwing businesses into dumpster fires because there's people who don't really know what they're doing, trying to serve. Yeah, but I think, I, I think in all this, you get back to the duality question of, of automatic and the great leader wanting yes. a, a Wix and their backers, but with the and Wix. what you're you're the professional trainer trying to up standards, yeah, and utilizing but, the most modern technology in web design and that, and it could you know it doesn't have to, but there there is a little bit of strain always going to be there a little bit it could be a lot better the problem is wix lies in their marketing when they and i put this on twitter when they have you're a, swearing it was a, it was a clean show and then you're, <laughs> you're, you're the bomb the bombs are being launched there we're, we, we gotta cut this is this is where the fundamental problems come from wix and Squarespace, their advertising is a lie when they put on a pretty blonde model holding a computer and it's like, look what I did, anybody can do it. It's so easy, come on over to Wix. This lie that anybody can build a website. Ain't nobody built, my mom put her down, I don't care how many hours you give her, she ain't coming up with a website on Wix or Squarespace or WordPress or anywhere else, okay? Yeah, but Kevin, our lives. The average person Kevin, cannot do this. But Kevin, so, our our lives are a lie, aren't they? Let's face it. But this is this is this the problem is WordPress bought that lie. They they're like, oh well, we should be able to do that too. Let's just. Well, I think it's more there for I think it's more their financial backers bought that lie. Really. That's fine. Hey, whoever bought it, it doesn't. The fact is that was bought, right? And this idea that we can create a builder for everybody that's just like Wix, and you don't have to know anything to, to come in and use it, and they failed in that regard. Right? Right, yeah. But so, this is so, where the problems come from. Yeah, on, got two more, and then I'll finish off the okay. fly-off question. So, um, Alamator, when I say that, what's your, re what's your one or two sentences? Um, mad props for innovating when they did innovate yeah creating something that did not exist at the time uh mad props for market side it's undeni it's undeniably successful and they they are they have a ton of talent i wish i had their team. bank account 
Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the ecosystem that they've built, the, 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 the way that they've, you know, and nobody's, nobody's perfect. And I know that they have some customer support things and some security things and yada, 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 but massive, right? So it's undeniable their, their success, but as a tool in the modern era today, I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole. Uh, that's, that's just the reality. Right. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from. I think they've got this technical legacy. And I, I don't know what's going I think they were, I think I'd, I got no whispers and I get many email because you know, I've been running this podcast. So I get a lot of twit DMs and little whispers, but I don't, I don't actually know. And by the way, if you want to whisper to me, DM me, please do, folks. I love being at the center of intrigue. Uh, um, but, uh, <laughs> It seemed they weren't doing much, but there must have been. I think they were being driven by business goals or whatever they're up to, but I agree with you there. Um, so, Oxygen. What was your reaction when I say Oxygen? I loved Oxygen. Um, I, I, I wish all the things that happened with Oxygen didn't happen with Oxygen. Uh, I, I want there to be more builders like Oxygen, like Bricks, like Quickly uh, in the ecosystem. I think these are the builders that really elevate the game. These are the builders that are innovating. Um, and uh, they, they do truly give us an environment where we can do some really amazing work. Unfortunately, uh, you know, Oxygen has, has gone downhill dramatically in terms of like third party ecosystem, community, education. <laughs> influencers things like that so um yeah that one's like you know uh, okay. i could be very I've, you've been very charitable to oxygen i i could be vicious towards that um but i'm not going to because i'm in enough trouble kevin uh um, so finish off with your beloved bricks What's bricks is the number one page builder in wordpress right now uh, it is, it's phenomenally powerful. It's workflow is phenomenally efficient. Uh, it's third party design library, um, the remote template system is allowing us. So with the integration of automatic CSS and frames, people are building custom le legit professional websites, 60 to 70% faster than they can do it anywhere else with those, with those three tools, bricks, ACSS frames is the number one workflow in WordPress right now. If you have a want a traditional approach to page building websites, right? If you want to open VS code and live in react and PHP and all this stuff in the block editor, do you do you but if you like the page building style approach, bricks ACSS frames is the killer combination that is it's unbeatable right now. Um, and so and bricks is one of the only environments that really allows that uh, quickly is probably the second environment and so if somebody wants something that does live in the block editor but gives you all the power that a normal page builder gives you then you're quickly i think those are the t the top two tools right now bricks and quickly crushing the game all right let's just finish off with the last question so if you had a top obviously I, I i come from england so i was a great viewer of um doctor who and the time machine so if you could add your own TARDIS and you could go back in time, Kevin, to the start of your career, what would be one or two things you would tell yourself? Um, Don't come on this show. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's been fun. It's been fun. Um, I can't wait for everybody to take all the stuff out of context. And uh, <laughs> Oh, by the way, <laughs> you page zealots, you religious page zealots out there, if you've got any complaints, just send them to Kevin. He's, That's right. He's the judo expert, <laughs> not me. Just send them to Kevin and see what replies you get. Um, I would, I, I would, I would have started doing the education side of things a lot sooner. Um, you know, I went to the agency side of things first, and yeah, I, I did. I enjoy agency work from time to time, and but this is so much more. First of all working with other agency owners and freelance there is nothing better like i literally wake up every single morning and there's messages from people who because let's let's go to the upside part of a lot of what i talked about there are agency owners who had never charged more than 3500 dollars ever in their life for a website and they're they're struggling 
they're having trouble paying the bills, they're not really feeling fulfilled in their work. I get messages every single morning from people like this who are now charging $15,000 for projects, $20,000 for projects, and their entire life and entire outlook has changed. And th this is far more fulfilling for me than like waking up to uh, you know a, a business is like, hey, our conversion rate went up and we're getting more traffic and like this is fantastic for our business. And I, I, that's great, I like that, right? But impacting individuals who I know are kind of like me, there's nothing more fulfilling in that regard. So I, I wish I got into the education side of things sooner. I wish I got more into the WordPress community sooner. I mean, let's be honest, last year was the, f I've been in WordPress since 2005. Last year is the first time I ever attended a WordCamp. Okay. That's, hey, Kevin. that's a, to me that, Kevin. that I would, I would want to do that over. Kevin. Yeah. I'm, we're going to have to have a, a one or two second break. Um, I, I apologize about this, but I'm sure. just, I'll be back in a second. I'm really gotcha. sorry about this. Yep. <laughs> Question is, are we still streaming? Should I take over the show? I'm, I'm looking at comments. If you guys are here, drop a comment. <laughs> he said, go for it. Take over. I can't see any numbers though. Anybody know how many how many we're streaming to right now? Oh, he's coming back. I can't take over for for very long. There he is. It was about to be my show, Jonathan. Sorry, I was about to take over the. I was about oh, to take over the stream. Yeah, please, sorry about that, Kevin. <laughs> right, yeah, I'm sorry about that, Kevin. I I had cancer last year and prostate, and I've recovered, but I've got a weak bladder. No worries, <laughs> no worries. I'm really I'm glad sorry you've recovered. About... Fun. I'm glad you've recovered. Yeah, it was yeah, it was difficult, but um, I'm doing a lot better. All Excellent. Right? Uh, so I'll cut that out. I will. Um, cool. I've talked. I've. I don't talk about it that much, but I think some of the tribe know. Um, so I'm okay on the live thing. We've got a few people listening, um, but I'll cut it out. So I interrupt. So we had to have a slight pause, folks, but. Um, yeah, I can understand why um, you get a real buzz because a lot of people, you know, it's endemic, isn't it? Undercharging, isn't it? Undercharging is huge in this industry. And like I said before, it doesn't do our clients a service either, right? Um, charging higher prices and you giving a higher level of service is better for us and it's better for our clients and it's better for the industry across the board. I've said time and time, I don't want this industry to turn into like a used car situation. I spent a lot of time in the photography industry. I've been doing photography for a very, very long time. And, you know, I saw what happened initially once the DSLR craze came out where it's like any anybody and their mom can buy a DSLR and suddenly they're a photographer and now they're selling family photo packages and all this other stuff. And just time after time after time, people are like giving, you know, 800 bucks, 1500 bucks hiring these photographers who don't know what they're doing going out and ruining weddings, ruining family photo sessions with their, you know, great grandparents, like stuff that can't be redone again. I don't want that stuff happening in our industry too. And it, and it is, it is, there's a lot of low level stuff being done. So that's why I think we all, us, our clients, the industry, as it rises, we all win, we all win more. And so that's a lot of why I talk about, you know, standards, best practices, better tools, et cetera, et cetera. Cause I'll go back to say it again. There are real people being impacted in the real world by the work that we're doing. And we have a, a responsibility uh, to some degree for that. Yeah. All right, Kevin, I've really enjoyed the discussion. Like I say, hopefully later on <coughs> in the year, come back and have another discussion. I think it, we've covered a ton of stuff. It's gone on a little bit, but you've been very gracious with your time. Um, I do appreciate that. So what's the best way for people to find out more about you and your training and the other products that you offer, Kevin? Uh, go to geary.co and everything is there. So there's pretty much a link to everything that I've got going on from that one little uh, hub. We'll make sure it's in the show notes. 
So if you go over to the WP Tonic, we'll make sure there'll be a transcript and all the links, everything that you need, folks. We will be back next week. Like I say, I've got some fabulous guests that like Kevin that have agreed to come on in January. I've got some new bookings for February. And um, it should be some great education material. We'll see you soon, Tribe. And if you Bye. ever if you ever want to moderate any discussions, like you like you mentioned with Brian Gardner or whatever, let me know. I think that would be I'm fun, totally actually. I might outreach to him and see if he's up for it. Because, Brian, I think it would be a really respectful, but also I, I think there will be differences probably. I'm only guessing this on, on attitude. But Brian is very nice, respectful, but extremely knowledgeable yeah. like yourself. And I think it would be a dis- constructive discussion, actually. And I think Brian isn't, he's got so much knowledge that he wouldn't be intimidated in any shape or form about it. Um, I think it'd be awesome. All right. We'll see you later, Ty. Bye. <laughs>